Okay, so what we're going to talk about is uh, a lab where you're going to analyze um, the COVID-19 virus, okay? Now, the lab that you're going to do is we're going to, it's actually divided into four parts. Um, so I have a sample lab here, which we're going to use as a template. And then you're going to use this sample lab to, to do the, the lab uh, on COVID-19, okay? We are going to look at, in this sample, we're going to look at uh, two different types of viruses. We're going to look at uh, the SARS virus that the outbreak was earlier in the year 2000, I think it was about 2003. Maggie, you remember that outbreak? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, these kids are a little bit too young for that because they would have been uh, maybe... <laughs> two? Not, One maybe. or two? Uh, yeah, they, I think you would have... 2003, would you have been born by then, girls? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just <babies>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to look at uh, SARS and MERS as uh, just like samples, okay? So the lab is divided into uh, four parts, okay? The first part is uh, what you're going to do is I'm going to give you uh, a bunch of code, letter, uh, letters, okay? So you see this on my screen? Yes. Okay, so you just see a bunch of letters, right? So what those letters correspond to are amino acid sequences of a protein. So the virus is made up of a bunch of proteins, right? What you're going to be asked to do is you're going to be asked to figure out uh, what protein this is. It's actually very easy, okay? So I'm going to show you the step. What you do is you take this sample. I'm just going to copy it like this, okay? Now, all you got to do is just sit back and relax because I'm recording this, all right? So I'm just going to copy this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to a site called NCBI. Okay, one of my favorite sites. So I'm going to open up a tab and I'm just going to type in and it, if it doesn't come up, you can just Google it. Okay, it's uh, just type in NCBI. Okay, and it comes up. It should be the first thing here. Okay, now what this lab, uh, what this site is, it's, a, it's an amazing site where scientists and researchers around the world deposit information. Okay, it's like extensive. It's so much information here about like studies, uh, nutritional studies, which I told you for me is voodoo, uh, a bunch of genetic stuff. Uh, there's, a, there's an incredible amount of information in here. And there's a whole stuff here, a section on, uh, on COVID-19. Oh, by the way, girls, let me ask them. Let me just, uh, um, just request something. Just leave your mics off for now uh, because uh, I'm recording this and I don't want you know, to be hearing something just in mm -hmm. case I shouldn't be hearing. So leave your mics off, and then if you need to say something, just, just unmute yourself, okay? All right, girls? So, um, okay. So what we're going to do is the first part in this is we're going to look at trying to figure out, okay, someone's mic's still on? <laughs> okay, girl, thanks. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out um, what this is, okay? So right now it's just a bunch of letters, uh, and the questions are, what are we going to, like, we're going to try to identify the sequence. Uh, we're going to try to uh, figure out the name of the gene and the protein. We're going to try to figure out the size of the protein. And we're going to try to figure out what it does. Now, you're not going to get all the information from uh, this site. You might have to then, once you figure out what this protein is, you might have to do some additional research to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, figure out what actually what it does. Okay. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, okay. Okay. So let's let's do the first one. Okay. So here we're going to take this sample here. We're going to copy it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a feature called BLAST. Okay. Now what BLAST does is it compares that sequence that we just copied to all the other sequences in the database. Now the sequence that we copied is uh, an amino acid sequence. So we are not gonna use nucleotide blast because that's gonna try to compare it uh, to nucleotides. Um, we are gonna use something called protein blast. Okay, so we're gonna click on protein blast. Now, some of you may remember we did something like this last year in grade 11 when we did a taxonomy project, okay? So all I have to do now is just gonna paste that sample here, okay? So there's that amino acid sequence. And I'm going to uh, run the blast, OK? So I'm going to run that blast. And it's going to retrieve the information 
uh, from that sequence. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. I know sometimes if there's a lot of traffic, it might take a while. Uh, let's, let's see, hopefully this takes uh, not too long. Of course, now it's gonna take, it's been working so well this morning. Uh oh, might take a while. Okay, hopefully, oh, come on. Come on, baby, let's go. Just be patient here. Sometimes it takes a little while. Okay. Yeah, it should come up soon. This is a neat, by the way, a neat example of Murphy's Law, where everything was working so fantastic this morning. And now that I'm doing it live with you, of course, it has to take its sweet time. Okay. Oh boy. Any questions this far uh, this, at this point? Sorry about this. I can't believe this is, uh, this is happening, but I shouldn't be surprised. Okay, maybe maybe while this is uh, working, maybe I can show you the next section in the meanwhile, okay? Okay, let, let's let's move on to the next section and I'm gonna come back to that. I mean, it's, it's eventually gonna get done. It's just taken, it's already been two minutes, I think. It's just gonna take a little while. So let's, you know what, let's move on to the next section because uh, the next section, I already have tabs already open. Okay. So in part A, you're going to try to figure out this amino acid sequence. Let's see if it's done. Oh, okay. Done. Finished. Okay. So here it is. So this is the result that came back. It took a while, but it came back. And um, this is a hit. Okay. This matched up that sequence with a bunch of sequences in the database. Now, if you look at the um, the first few sequences, you'll notice it's got uh, a name. It says ORF 1A polyprotein. Uh, the second one is pretty much the same thing. So what we can do is we can just click on, uh, I would just click on the first one that you get, uh, but you'll notice that the, the, the bunch, the top, whatever is so many here are all pretty much the same. They are 100% identical match to the sample that we just we just looked at. So I'm just gonna click on this to see what, what this is, okay? So here is, uh, this is a lineup of the sequence that we put in right here on top called the query. And this is a lineup of the sequence that was retrieved from the database. This is its name. So I'm gonna click on this and see what we get. Okay. So it's telling me that it's ORF1A polyprotein telling me how big it is. It's uh, 4,382 amino acids long. Um, it even gives me some of the information about the protein. Um, so now what I can do is once I, I've identified the protein, uh, I can then start looking at, you know, answering some of these questions, right? Like, okay, so what is the name of the gene? What's the name of the protein? Uh, how big is this protein? Now, it might not tell you, for example, what this protein does. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it says it's a non-structural protein. I can't really see where it actually says, it gives you some information about what it does, 
But uh, what you can do, probably the, th uh, the smartest thing to do at this point is once you know what it is, you can just literally Google this protein and, and figure out, it'll, you know, it'll tell you at some point if you, if you do the research, uh, what is ORF1A, what does it do? And, and then you can just get your information uh, that way. The hard part is just figuring out what it is, okay? But uh, that's an example of where we uh, we're using this feature to, you know, to solve uh, an unknown sequence. Here's another uh, sequence, so that's sample A. I can look at sample B. Sample B looks like it's smaller. Um, so I can put now that in my blast. And again, I'm doing a protein blast. Let's see if this takes also a while. And let's see now if this is uh, probably, a, I would assume, a different protein. Um, okay, but in the, let this run in the background. In the meanwhile, what I'll do is I'll actually move on to the next section and we'll come back to it, okay? So that's part A. Part A, you're trying to figure out unknown proteins, okay? In part B, what you're trying to do is you're actually going to look at uh, two at a time, two viruses at a time, and you're going to line them up and analyze them, okay? So this is a totally different, totally different thing. So in this example here, we're gonna line up uh, two samples of a uh, MERS virus. Now the MERS outbreak was later than the SARS outbreak. I think you believe it was like, uh, I think it, the earliest was 2008, there was an outbreak. Uh, I know there was, uh, well, obviously there was an outbreak in 2016 and 2018 because we have entries and collection dates for these viral samples. Um, I think the first one's about 2008. So in part B, what we're going to do is we're going to compare uh, two different sequences at a time. So here I have a sequence called MN541290. It's sequence taken from Sudan in 2016 and there's another one from Saudi Arabia taken in 2018 okay now I already have this done uh, for you I believe it is let me see where it is should have these already lined up with this one yes okay so what we're going to use in this case is we're going to use this uh, part of NCBI so all you have to do to get to this is click on this link, okay? This link here will take you to, uh, to this site. But when you click on it, yours will take you uh, to the uh, coronavirus, the COVID-19 samples, okay? But it's the same area of, of the site. This uh, is for the, the MERS samples because I want to use this as my sample, okay? So here's the one from Sudan. You can see it checked off, it's MN541290. This is the one from Sudan. Um, this is the release date when they publish the information. That's not the collection date. The collection date can be found uh, if we keep scrolling down this way, you can see where the collection date is, okay? Uh, and we're gonna compare that to the other sequence in the sample, which is, should be up here somewhere. From the one from Saudi Arabia, MN541196, uh, that was taken in 2018, okay? Now, I've already done this just to save some time. So uh, what we're gonna do is you're gonna run a, a separate blast uh, and using the exact same technique that I just showed you, but it's just a slight slight difference okay so this is what we're going to do um in the previous oh by the way here's the protein blast i believe for this is the one that we just did wait okay this is yeah this is the one from the mn samples okay okay all right so this one then is the one we just looked at uh, that was running for part A. This is um, a different sample. Uh, this is the one from part A that I will come back to. So uh, let me let me let me let me just finish with part B first before I before I come back and backtrack a little bit. Okay. So 
the two samples that we're going to look at so let me open up a separate tab and again we're going to go back to ncbi and what we're going to do is we're going to do a blast okay but this time what we're going to do is we're not going to do a protein blast we're going to do a nucleotide blast because we're looking at uh, well we're looking at dna sample now what's interesting about the virus is the virus is actually an, an rna virus but it's showing you it's showing it to you as a dna sample okay so what i'm going to do is i have already the uh well, this is like the what's called the accession code so this is the identifier of the virus so all i have to do is just copy this so you'll obviously have different samples to copy and i'm going to put the first one here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that i align two or more sequences so i'm going to click this box what that's going to do now is it's going to give me the option to compare it to a second sequence so i'm going to hit copy Okay, so now I have the first sequence here, and I have the second sequence here. And what this is going to do is it's going to run a comparison. Okay, it's going to compare the two, see how similar and different they are. So these two samples, okay, are, it says here, they are 98.76% identical. I can look at what's called the alignment. The alignment actually shows you the alignment of the nucleotides um, one versus the other okay you'll notice that uh here sorry there's a see these where there's a gap here right over here that's because there's some sort of a mutation that happened here where that is tt but here is gc but anywhere where you see a line like for example if i look at this and that you see there's a line there's no mutation there. So this says that these two sequence are 99% identical. Now it's rounded off, so you can actually give me an exact number. Uh, there's, um, out of the 1,046 amino acids that were compared, uh, 1,033 are identical. So there's a difference of 13 out of 1,046, uh, whatever that percentage is, which what I meant is not exactly 1%. Uh, that would be then how do you determine this question? What is the percent similarity between the two sequences? Okay. Uh, what are the number of point mutations? So number of point mutations then in this case would be um, 13 because there are 13 uh, letters. I hope I didn't say amino acids. I meant to say nucleotides. There are 13 uh, nucleotides that are different between these two samples. So there are 13 uh, mutations in this case. Um, now, that will allow us to answer this question. What we're going to then do is we're going to actually line them up using a different feature called an align. Okay. The align is actually, uh, so let me close this window so I don't have so many windows open. The align feature is located right here. So when I click on the two samples that I want to look at, so in this case, this one, and this one. These two are checked off. So when I hit the align button, what that's gonna do is it's gonna line them up. So here they are. Okay, I don't know if you can see that's a little bit small, but these are the, these are the viral accession codes. So MN541196 and MN54190. One two nine zero. Those are the two samples we were looking at. Now, what you what you're seeing here is um, the genome of one and the genome of the other. And you see these these bars. These bars actually tell you where the mutations are in that genome. So what I can do is I can zoom in. So I can zoom in, and that gives me the amino acid. Sorry, I said amino acid. I meant nucleotide sequence of the virus, okay? So right now I'm looking at uh, the region of about 510 to 538. So what I can do is I can, I can actually go to the beginning. So this is at zero. Now I don't see any mutations here. 
But if I zoom back out, what I can see is that there is no uh, orange bar here. The first orange bar looks like it's at about 100 and that's 100, that's 200. It looks like it's at about maybe 130. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna scroll to that section. And yeah, there's that first uh, point mutation. You can see that, that the sequence, this sequence differs from this sequence at this site. Now, if I zoom back out, so there's one mutation. If I zoom back out, I notice there's another bar. Now, not a bar that is beside it looks a little bit thicker. So I suspect the thicker bar probably means something. So let's, let's zoom into that section, which looks like it's at around 160, okay? So if I zoom in, I'm gonna go to that section, which is about 160. So I notice, aha, uh -huh, there it is right over here. So there was that first section. I'm gonna zoom in to that section. And I noticed that, oh, look at that. There's a, a mutation here, here, and also here. So it positions 156, 157, and 159. I can see that there's another bar over here, which is at around 220, no, sorry, about 240. So what I can do is I can do the same thing. I can zoom in to that section and I can actually see that there's another point mutation there. The samples you'll have to look at won't have as many bars because these, uh, I mean, because the virus is, is fairly new, so it hasn't had enough time to really, really mutate as much as the MERS virus has, because it's a much older virus. Well, much older in the sense that it's, you know, it, MERS has been in the human population for a lot longer than COVID-19 has. So what you're gonna do is when you line them up, and you go through that process is you're going to describe the mutations that you see. So what you're going to do is one of them will be your, uh, your reference point, And then the other one will be uh, the one you're going to say, well, uh, this virus now has a mutation where at this point it switched from this letter to this letter. So for instance, let's say in this case that we're using the top one as our reference point and I zoom back in, I could say that, and go back to the first mutation, which is about there. I could say, so let's say this top one is my reference point. I can say that this virus, there was a mutation where now this is, um, this position has changed where one position 134 now, uh, in relation to my reference point, uh, there's a point mutation which says that this is A, it's a switch from G to A, okay? So what you're gonna have to do then is you're gonna have to find the mutations. There's not gonna be as many as what you're seeing on that example, um, but you're gonna have to find them. You're also gonna be able to look for insertions and deletions. Now, in this sample here, there are none. Now, what that means is if I scroll all the way to the beginning, okay, let's say, let's say I line up all the way to the beginning. You'll notice that they line up. Uh, so here's position one, there's position one, no problem. If I go all the way to the end of my sample, okay, all the way to the end, you'll notice that they uh, line up at the end too. So let me zoom in. Okay, this, so this is the end of my sample. So if your virus does have an insertion and deletion, what's gonna happen is, the uh, one of the viruses will be shorter or any other one will therefore be longer, okay? So if you have an insertion and deletion, what's gonna happen is they're not gonna perfectly overlap at the ends. Now, in this case, this virus does not have that. So you would say for this question, you would say, uh, no, there are no insertions and deletions at this point. Uh, I do have another sample. I think it's, uh, no, it's been downloaded. Yeah. Okay, here's another one. This is from two different samples taken uh, later on. I can't remember when this was taken, but these are two different samples and you can see way more, again, don't worry, like I would never ask you to go through these bars. That's gonna take you forever. The SARS, I mean, the SARS COVID, the COVID-19 one uh, will have only a few bars, so it won't be too bad. Um, but 
Uh, let's see if this one has uh, insertion at the beginning or some sort of a deletion. So you can see here, uh, here's an example of that. So um, now it's hard to say which one uh, acquired the mutation. So there's two ways to look at it. One way to look at it is if we can say that the virus on top, whatever MG5968803 is, uh, acquired a deletion. Or we could say um, that the virus below, which is MG596802, acquired an insertion. Now, if the question says to use one as the reference, then we could say that the other virus uh, acquired an insertion. But it wouldn't be wrong to say that the, the reference virus uh, acquired the deletion. That's possible, right? Um, so in it, let's see what happens. Let's see if the ends also line up. We go to the, all the way to the end. Uh, it looks like there is nothing happening. The ends are perfectly, oh, wait, there is actually right here, uh, some sort of a mutation where it looks like this letter was deleted, or we could say this letter was inserted in the top virus, okay? So the other thing, you're gonna look for point mutations, but you're also gonna look for uh, evidence of insertions and, and deletions, okay? So that's part B, okay? I'm gonna go back to part A because the, uh, that sample, the blast has come back, which is this, okay? So it says, uh, this is some sort of SARS coronavirus BJ182-4. So let's click on this, see what this is, okay? So here it is. So again, we're back to part A. Uh, you can see that it's a much smaller sample compared to the previous one, I think it was like 3,000 and something letters. I think I still have it up here. Uh, where is it? No, it's not that, it's this one. Yeah, it's like, no, that's not it. I think it's this one, but it was like thousands of letters long. This sample is much smaller. It's only 127 letters long. I can click on the accession code to figure out what it is. Okay, it's open. Okay, it says the, um, it says the region name, uh, what is it here? Protein, it says putative protein. Uh, I don't know if that really tells you much. Um, but don't worry, the samples that you're gonna look at, they're all gonna come back with official names. Uh, so it's really most important here that we figure out how do you actually use the, uh, the BLAST feature to find these, uh, these uh, proteins, okay? Okay, uh, any questions at this point? You girls still there? Yes, sir. <laughs> Any questions at this point? That was a lot. It was that is a lot. That's only yeah, that's only that part. Overwhelming. That's only that's only part A and B. Sir, I'm gonna have to rewatch the whole thing. I know. That's why we're recording it. <laughs> okay, let's look at part C then. If you does anyone have any questions about A and B? No, we'll no? just rewatch it, sir. I feel like <laughs> you've given up. Okay, I understand. Uh, let's let's look at then part. Uh, part C, okay? In part C, what we're gonna do is we're going to look at the taxonomy of the virus, all right? This one's actually quite short. Um, in your lab, you'll be given a bunch of uh, virus samples with their accession codes. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, okay? Taken from uh, Saudi Arabia 2019, Sudan 2016, Saudi Arabia 2018, uh, Saudi Arabia again, 2008, and then a uh, sample from Italy, 2011, okay? So how do you get this taxonomical report? Is you go back, so I, I guess I can close this window now, let me close that one. Okay, so you go back to this, okay? Go back to this site. So it's the same section for B, okay? And Instead of hitting the align button, we're gonna hit what's called build the 
phylogenetic tree. Okay, so here I have the, uh, so I need to click on all five samples, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just gonna go through your accession codes and make sure that they're all clicked off. So for example, I have, in this case, I have MG596803. And you can see that that is this one, MG596803. And you can see that that one is uh, checked off. I also also checked off um, this one here. And that's not the one I wanted to compare it to though. So then let me see, let me close this. Okay, I think it's, I'm also gonna check it with this, MN541290. I think that's one of the ones, yeah. So all you have to do is just go through the list and click off, just check off the ones that you're gonna to want to compare, okay? So in this case, we wanna make sure that these five are checked off in the bank. Now, how do you find them? There's the collection dates. So let's say I wanna find this sample, MN120514. Um, it says it was collected 2019-0328, right? So what I can do is I can go to my collection dates and I can look for that date. So 2019, right? Uh, 2019-0328. So there it is right here. And if I scroll, it's MN120514, which let me just double check. Yeah, MN120514. So once I have the five samples checked off, I'm gonna hit the uh, build the phylogenetic tree, okay? Now I've already run this for you. So this is what it's gonna give you back. It's gonna give you back basically a family tree of those five viral samples, okay? Now, what you have to do for section C is you have to include the tree, okay? So you're gonna include a picture of this. It's giving me some sort of an error message here. I don't know why it's doing that. So uh, one of the things is include the image of your tree. Okay, so you just have to copy and paste that. And then it's gonna ask you some questions. So for example, it says, which two samples are most similar? So do you guys, do you ladies remember how to read a tree like this? Let me just refresh it. Uh oh, job was not found. Oh, I have to do that again. Hopefully this works. Let's see. It's giving me some trouble. Okay, so here's a tree back. Okay, so do you, do you ladies remember how to read these trees? No, sir. No? Oh. So the way you read trees, the higher up the branch points, the more similar they are. So see how these two samples over here, these two Saudi Arabian samples uh, from 2018 and 2019, see how they're really high up the tree? So think of this as like, a, imagine that over here is the base of the tree and this is uh, one branch and then this is another branch up the tree and this is another branch up the tree. The higher you go up the tree, uh, the more similar they would be. So like, for example, these two would be more similar than the one that would be second most similar to these two would be this sample over here. And then the one that would be most similar to these three would be this sample over here. And then the one that's the most different is this one from Saudi Arabia 2008, which is, if you look, that's the branch point for Saudi Arabia and this, these two samples, 2019 and 2008, that branch point is all the way down here. So the way you read a phylogenetic tree is that if they share a branch point that's high up the tree, they're more similar. So see how these two share a branch point that's really high up the tree? Sorry, they share this branch point. Uh, whereas these two, Saudi Arabia 2016 and 2019 share that branch point. 
that branch point is lower on the tree. Therefore, the lower on the tree, the more dissimilar, the higher up the tree, the more similar. So if I look at, for example, uh, Italy, 2011, okay? And I compare it to Saudi Arabia, 2019, 03, they are connected through this branch point right here. The Italian sample and the Saudi Arabia 2008 would be connected through this branch point down here. So because Italy 2011 and Saudi Arabia 2019 are connected by a higher branch point, these two would be more similar, okay? So your job will then be to, once you uh, have the image of the tree, um, you were just to analyze it. Now, I highlighted some stuff here because you're gonna be analyzing uh, the COVID samples. And I have some specific questions because some of the samples you'll be looking at are specific samples from the US. So you're gonna be asked to answer questions about those samples from the US specifically. Okay. All right, any questions, uh, any further questions at this point? How many of you have like just fallen asleep at this point? Given up? Me. Huh? Me. You given up? A little bit. <laughs> Let me give it a, a try again, maybe like later tonight. You know, all you have to do is just like you don't remember you're working on this in what? How, when is this due? Are you giving us like a week? No, it's due tomorrow. What? Hey, no, what? Not. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll give you, it'll be due anytime next week. Okay. But, but here's the thing. Do you, if you're doing this in groups, you don't have to do this by yourself. You can divide this, right? Um, but we can really see each other. So it's kind of, well, there's something called the internet. You can do it on Google, <laughs> Google docs and just share the doc with me. Right. <laughs> Sorry, okay. We're also having a test. That I yeah. Answer. Yeah, we will. We'll do a, uh, yeah, we'll talk about the, your online quiz on Thursday. Okay. 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 Last section D part D. Okay. Part D, what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to be asked specifically to look at uh, one viral sample, obviously from COVID-19. Um, so the one we're going to use as an example is this one. Okay. So uh, I have this already loaded up. Here. This is the SARS coronavirus from, I believe it was, this one was taken. Uh, it's, this is when it was published. I'm not sure exactly when this was, uh, maybe 2004, I'm not sure. But anyways, it's gonna give you, um, with that accession code, you'll be able to find the actual viral sample so all you have to do is plug it in but where you plug it in though is uh so this could this could be a little tricky so you copy the accession code okay and you go to blast sorry not blast you just go to let's go back to ncbi okay and what you do is you click on uh nucleotide and you put in the accession code and that's the easiest way to do it and it will give you the complete viral profile. So here's the complete genome, okay? And all you have to do is answer questions about the, uh, the virus. The first question is actually just simple research, okay? Um, you know, just look up, uh, you have to look up, it says, is the virus, it says the coronavirus is a positive sense RNA strand. Uh, so we have to look up, what does that mean? Now, when we go over on Thursday, uh, how information like goes, well, we talked about replication, but on Thursday we'll talk about like transcription and we'll talk about translation, right? So I'm gonna come back to explaining what this means, what positive sense, uh, what a positive sense RNA type virus is. It has to do with the transcription and the translation part. So we're gonna come back to that, okay? Um, the other questions, you're gonna specifically look up uh, based on what you just got. So for example, the first question, how large is the genome, okay? So uh, based on this result, it says that it's uh, about 29,000, let's say it's, if we round it off, let's say about 30,000, well, you wouldn't round it off in your answer, 
with actually telling me what it is, but uh, it's almost 30,000 base pairs, right? Um, and if you compare that to our genome, our genome is about 3 billion. So this genome is, uh, that would be about 100,000 times, to do the math right, uh, smaller than our genome. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's quite small. But now, what's interesting though is uh, when you compare it to other viral genomes, actually this one's actually one of the bigger ones. Um, so one of the first questions is, you know, how big is the virus, the COVID virus compared to, how big is it? And also you got to compare it to, to our genome, okay? Our genome being 3 billion base pairs. Um, then you just look up some of these other questions. Like for example, um, some of that you'll have to do a bit of research. Like what is, the, what is a five prime UTR, also known as a leader sequence? How large is it in this sample? So the research part, the answer would be the same, whether it's uh, the SARS virus or the COVID-19, COVID um, but how big it is, well, that's not gonna be the same. So for example, here, if I scroll down, uh, it says the five prime UTR is from 120, uh, sorry, uh, number one, so nucleotide one to nucleotide 264. So if I actually click on that, it actually highlights the five, uh, what's called the five prime UTR. Now, again, Thursday, when we talk about transcription translation, we can address what is actually, what does that mean? What is the five prime uh, UTR, okay? Uh, so this will make a bit more sense to you maybe after after we meet on Thursday. Um, and then just simply, you know, answer the rest of the question, like what is the three prime UTR? Uh, how big is it? Uh, what percentage of the genome codes for protein? So that one, all you have to do is you have to look at uh, where it says, for example, uh, C, so actually the easiest way to do it, uh, I'll, I'll actually, I'll spill the beans here. The easiest way, cause you don't have to give me the exact number. Just give me like an approximate value is if I look at uh, the five prime UTR, which is that. And then I look at the three prime UTR, which is that. You'll notice something interesting. The three prime UTR is at the end, okay. The uh, five prime UTR is at the beginning. Okay, so the stuff in the middle is actually the protein, the coding section of the protein. So if you want to know what percentage of the virus codes, it's actually a very simple formula. Now it's not exact, but it's pretty close. What you do is you take the size of the virus. So in this case, it's about 29,751, and you subtract the, uh, the five prime UTR, okay, which is the section from one to 264. So you subtract 264 basically from the viral genome size, and you take away also the three prime UTR section, okay which is from here to here. So that would be here. So however big that is, and I'm not gonna count it right now, you can do that. You take away those two things from the actual size of the virus, the rest of it codes for protein. So then you can work out the percentage. Now what's interesting is that if I look at this viral sequence, which is quite large, it means from here all the way to here, you can see it's, you know, it's big. And the only thing that uh, doesn't code are the two end parts, right? The five prime and the three prime. So that part that I just showed you all the way down here, right? And the uh, five prime part, which is at the beginning and everything else codes, tells you that all oh, like a big percentage, maybe like 98, 99% of the virus the genome actually codes for protein. Because one of the questions that you're gonna be asked to follow up with is uh, um, compare that uh, to the human genome. 
and you'll see a, a very stark contrast when we compare what percentage of the viral genome code to protein and what percentage of the, uh, the human genome code to protein. Okay. Um, the next question is look at the CDS coding sequences. So the CDS, these are these things. So whenever you see the letter CDS, that is the uh, coding sequence. Okay. If I click on it, it uh, highlights it. And basically, you're going to click on the CDS sections and you're going to answer these questions. What three letters did they all start with? Okay. Uh, what is interesting about these three letters? Uh, now, one, one word about this. What is interesting? It says to look at the genetic code. Remember T equals U. All right. Let me explain what that means. Um, if I look at what it says about the virus, okay? It says the virus is, can, let me get rid of this. Why is this not? Okay. Come on, I can't get rid of this. What was that? Okay. It says that the virus is uh, RNA, right? It says it's a single stranded RNA, right? It's about, I guess, about 30,000 letters, uh, but it's RNA. But if I look at my sequence, uh, that ain't RNA when I look at it. Oh, sorry, let me go all the way down. Uh, this sequence, the genome, that's not RNA because what letter do you see there that gives it away that's not RNA? Anybody? How do we know this is not an RNA sequence? There's no U. Yeah. So all you have to do is just simply change the letter T to the letter U. And if you change the letter T to the letter U, then what that would give you would be the RNA sequence, okay? So in other words, if I look at these letters, it's A, T, A, T, T, right? A, G, G, T, T. The actual RNA genome would be A, U, A, U, U, A, G, G, U, U. The reason why I'm telling you this is because, um, well, because it says the viral gene genome is RNA, but you're seeing the letter T. So it's like, what's going on? Maybe Barry doesn't know what he's talking about. The reason why I'm telling you this is because uh, the first three letters of the CDS coding sequence, when you look at the genetic code, the genetic code is written in RNA. And the first three letters will not have the letter, like if you see the letter T, all you have to do is replace it with the letter U. And then look at those three letters look up the genetic code so i can show you for example if i google uh genetic code okay so it comes back with something that looks like this let's click on this one okay so you'll notice that the genetic code is um there's no t in it okay now again thursday we'll talk about how to read the genetic code it's actually quite easy, all right? I just want to point out that there is no uh, T in the genetic code. So what you have to do is just simply change the letter T to the letter U, okay? Uh, and then the last question is, um, so you have to research uh, what are stem loops? This is an interesting and beautiful thing about RNA viruses. Sometimes they fold up. Actually, kind of looks kind of cool. So it looks something like this, stem loops, RNA, okay? So it looks something like that. They actually fold up like that, it's kind of cool. And the last question is, uh, do you notice if the sample has any, any stem loops? The way you answer is you just simply, you go through the information and you look for the word stem loop. Now. If I look at this virus, the word stem loop does not come up. So this is telling me that this virus doesn't have a stem loop, but I'm telling you yours will. So, uh, and it might have more than one and uh, you're gonna have to figure out uh, how many it has, okay? Uh, and then what's interesting about the stem loop is if you compare the, 
first few letters of the stem loop with the last few letters um, in reverse, you'll see something really cool when you, when you look at the stem loop, okay? Oh, wow, all right, that's it. The girl still alive? Barely. Barely, okay, let me stop the record right now, okay? Hold on, I'm gonna stop recording.